Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about DVD deferral. This is our agenda today. We will see when to use DVD deferral, why and how to use it, what happens under the hood, what kind of scenarios are there for DVD deferral and we will obviously do some hands-on to actually understand how it works. Okay. When to use DVD deferral? Let's imagine you are a new developer in your team and you are trying to build a new model. And that model is dependent on some upstream models that you don't have in your schema. So there are two ways you can approach this. One, obviously, the very simple. You can build all your upstream models first and then you try to build the new model or you can use dbt deferral and you can just go ahead with building your new model you don't have to build the upstream models first so in that case dbt will use the upstream models from your production environment why I guess we have already said that why, but uh, there is an additional thing to it. That is not building your upstream models or not having to build your upstream models can save time, you know, some time or cost, like warehouse cost in, in case of Snowflake. How? You just have to use the manifest file from your production run while you're running the new model. And in case of DBT Cloud, you just have to click a button and then you just run your new model. We will see both on how to do this. We will see how to do this with DBT Core as well as in DBT Cloud. What happens? As we have already said, that DVD will resolve or use the upstream models from production environment or production database. Scenarios. There can be two scenarios. One, the upstream model is selected for the current run, as in when you are trying to build your new model, you are also selecting the upstream model as part of the run and the other scenario scenario is that you're just running the new model or rather you're just selecting the new model to run when you're selecting the upstream model as well along with your new model dbt will actually not use this model from the production environment it will actually build the upstream model first in your current environment which is your dev environment and then it will build the new model that you have been working on if the upstream model is not selected in that case dbt will use it from production so that's the deferral now it can so happen that your current model is dependent on say three models. So one is present in your current schema or current environment and the other two. From the other two, one is not present in your current schema and the other is actually selected as part of your run command. So one is selected, one is present in your current environment and one is not present. We will see that scenario while we do the lab. Okay. Let's go there. All right, so this is the famous Jaffel Shop project and we will see how to work with DBT deferral. So if you remember, if we have to use DBT deferral, we have to have the manifest from a previous production run. So what we will do first is we will build all our models in our production environment. So I'll just do And I'll just say 
after I get fraud. What this will do is it will build all the models in our production schema right here. If you see, it's a production schema and we will look at the tables. The models are actually already there, but for the sake of this training, we will again build it. And that serves two purposes. One is it will again build all the models into our production schema and the second, it will give us the manifest file that we will need under the target directory, this. So we will just wait for it to finish and we'll come back once it's done. All right, our build in the production environment is done. And if we look at it, if you see, this is our broad schema where all the models are built. Okay. Now we will confirm that by going into the Snowflake environment and we will see all our models here. Next. The next thing is the most important thing, which is to keep a copy of this manifest file so that we can use it for our deferral runs. So what I will do is I'll just make a copy of the target folder and keep it here, that's it. Right, so we have our manifest from the production run under the target prod folder. Now, let's look at the Dev schema, which is our Dev environment. We have selected, or we have tried to select the Dev schema, but it is not there. Now, we we'll look at our customer's model. So if you see the customer's model, is dependent on three upstream models, stage customers, orders, order items. So what we will do is we will just build one of these models in our development environment. So let's just say orders. So, and if you look at the orders model, it is also dependent on some other models. So to build in this, even in the first place, we will have to use deferral because we don't have any of the other models in our development environment. In fact, we don't have the development schema itself. So let's just do it. Let's just mention the target. Okay, first, then select model. Orders and this is how we defer. And obviously, when you defer, you have to mention the state file. And state file is obviously the manifest file. So you have to mention the folder where the state file or where the manifest file can be found, which is our target underscore prop. And that's it. Let's just build our orders model. Now uh, let's look at this first. You see orders model is actually dependent on stage orders and order items. And these are obviously not present in our dev schema. So yeah, it has been built. See, it has thrown no error now. If we look at the compiled version of this uh, query, 
for the orders model, we will see it has used the other models or upstream models from the production environment. Now, if you see stage orders and order items, these two are referred from the prod environment. This is how actually deferral works. Now, we'll see another step for the customer's model where we will have one model built in our current environment. One is not present and one will be selected and not present. So, let's see. Our Snowflake Dev environment looks. We have our Dev schema right now. Let's we'll see what tables we have. Only orders table. See. Now we will build our. Let's just see the compiled version of our. Custom state. Order. Now we know that orders table is present in our current environment. So we won't do anything for that. But we will select order items model. And we know that it is not present. in our dev schema. So we have all these scenarios covered. One of the models, one of the upstream models is not present in our current schema or current environment, which is order items, but it is selected in our current run. One of the upstream models is not present in our current environment but it is also not selected which is stage customers so this one should be referred from prod and order items since we have selected it it will be built first and in the current environment which is dev environment and then it will be used from the dev environment and orders will actually be referred from the current environment because it is already present so we will see deferral only for stage customers because this one is already present in current environment and this one is being built as part of the current run. So let's just look at the compiled query first. Okay, so if we see Stage customers is referred from prod, as you said. Orders will be referred from dev, which is our current environment. And order items, it is not present, but it will be built. And that's why it will be referred from dev, our current environment. Now let's just run it. Before we run it, we will again confirm that we're under the tables in our current schema, except for orders. Um, we will just run this. Now, as an output of this run, we will see three models built in our current environment, which is dev. Let's see. Yes, orders which was already present, order items and customers, these two are built right now as part of the last command. So this is how deferral works in DBT core environment or with DBT core. Just remember that with DBT core, you have to use the deferral flag, which is defer, and the state flag along with the folder where the manifest file resides in for the production or any other previous runs.
Now we will look at the same thing uh, in DBT Cloud perspective. We will see how it works here. Now again, we will just look at the customer's file or customer's model, and this is not different. This is normal run. If you look at the compiled query, we will see this is the target schema right now, which is our current environment and here DBT Cloud and all of them are being used from the same environment which is our current environment but if you look at our snowflake environment you will see that dbtm server schema does not exist yet it does not exist now, if we use deferral and compile the model again, we will see that these models are being referred from prod environment, as you see here. All of them are being referred from prod. Right? Now, let's build this. So as part of this run, we will see just one model built in our target schema in the current environment, which is DBTM server, and that build is successful. Now we should be able to select DBTM server schema because this is present now, and we will just look at tables. As I said, we will just see the custom still. Yes, that's what we ran right now. And all the upstream models are used from the production environment. That's it. That's how we use deferral in DVD. Thank you for watching.